My name is Diane Sanfilippo. I'm a certified holistic nutrition consultant and the New York Times bestselling author of Practical Paleo and the 21 Day Sugar Detox. And my background is in holistic nutrition. And so what that means is I studied how to support the body naturally in being healthy. That's it. Bottom line, how to support your body through nutrition, some supplements, lifestyle changes, and have it be healthy. So very quickly, a disclaimer, I am not a medical professional, I'm not a doctor, I don't intend for you to take any of this advice or information as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, and so remember what I'm giving you are diet and lifestyle recommendations, and I'm going to tell you right now that the information that I give you today is pretty invaluable. I would say that because I shared this information recently with my mother who finally came to me with her numbers, her cholesterol and triglyceride numbers and said, what should I do? And I gave her this information that I'm about to give you and her numbers are improving dramatically to the curiosity of her doctor who did not give her the same recommendations that I gave her and yet what I told her worked, so imagine that. For those of you who aren't even sure what cholesterol is, cholesterol is a waxy protective substance that is critical to your body and countless body functions. It's a precursor for a lot of your hormones. You need it to be able to produce vitamin D properly. Vitamin D, it's called vitamin D, but actually a lot of people are considering it more of a hormone because of the way it acts in the body. You need it to be able to create bile. A lot of you may know this and you may not, that you need bile in order to break down, emulsify, the way that soap emulsifies oil on a pan, bile does that in the body. It helps to break down fats that we're eating and you need cholesterol in order to make bile. Now, one thing that people may not realize is that what you eat in terms of cholesterol, so let's just say you're eating eggs or you're eating something that has cholesterol in it, which you can only get cholesterol from animal foods, you can't get cholesterol from plant foods, the cholesterol that you eat barely impacts the cholesterol that's in your blood. Your body makes cholesterol to the level that it needs to respond to problems of inflammation in the body. And so what a lot of folks are doing is trying to lower cholesterol. I have a really great analogy for you guys and I hope that you love it as much as I do because I use this one to explain it to my mom who she's a smart woman, but you know what? We don't all know the same amount of things about the same amount of topics, right? And I know a lot about this stuff and I know a lot about how to help people make a positive impact on their cholesterol levels in a way that means something, not just in a way that changes the number. And so when you try to take a statin drug or when you try to take fish oil or when you try to take anything to lower cholesterol, what you're doing is essentially taking a hose and pouring water on a fire. Except the problem is inside the house is a party. <laughs> And the party attendees keep lighting matches. And so you can throw all the water you want on that fire. And maybe from the outside, it looks like the fire has calmed down, but people are still inside lighting matches. And when you're not changing your diet and lifestyle in order to improve the landscape of what's going on in your body and lowering inflammation, if you don't lower inflammation, lowering cholesterol is almost pointless and actually it might be dangerous. If you're still living the same lifestyle that caused your cholesterol to raise, but you're trying to lower the cholesterol, all you're doing is pulling water away from the fire in a sense, you're actually just making it worse because the cholesterol is there to resolve a problem. The cholesterol is there to respond to inflammation. And so if you're trying to lower cholesterol to lower the number, what you really need to be doing is lowering the reasons for inflammation or reducing the reasons for inflammation in the body. And so here are things that contribute to high levels of cholesterol for the wrong reasons. The first one is alcohol consumption. The second one is excess sugar and carbohydrate consumption. And I don't mean sweet potatoes and bananas and fruit. I mean refined stuff. You guys know what I mean. When I say eating excess sugar and refined carbs, I mean Oreos and Ho-Hos and tons of bread and pasta and you're eating that stuff to the exclusion of other healthy foods. You're not balancing your plate. You're also eating tons of these refined carbs and maybe your activity level is like nothing. Maybe you're just on the couch, but what you're eating three meals a day is a ton of refined carbs. There is a genetic condition called familial hypercholesterolemia. All it means is it's in the family, high cholesterol levels. But here's the problem, most people are confusing 
a characteristic of your family to have unhealthy diet and lifestyle habits with this genetic disorder. And the genetic disorder does not affect that many people. If it were affecting you, you would have cholesterol numbers close to and over a thousand. And so I've gotten some questions from a few of you where you've had those kinds of numbers and you may have this genetic disorder. When you've got numbers somewhere between like two and three or two and 350, 200 and 350, this is not affecting you. If your numbers were extremely high, then this could be affecting you. And what it does is it affects the entire process of the receptors in the body that can process cholesterol. And so if you had that genetic disorder, then you need to be working with a doctor and that's not something I can advise you on 100%. I do recommend that you check out work by Chris Masterjohn. He is who I consider to be one of the experts, if not the expert on the way this stuff works in the body. A lot of the notes that I have and things that I've broken down for you guys is based on information that he's taught combined with some other doctors, Dr. Thomas Dayspring, lots of information that I've collected over the years. And honestly, everything that I'm telling you to do, it's completely in line with what I've been telling you guys to do just to be a healthy person from the get go. And so, what I wanna tell you guys off the bat is that most of you who are here, who are eating a healthy, real food, paleo diet, you probably don't have high cholesterol for the wrong reasons. You may have cholesterol numbers that seem quote high in terms of what your doctor's looking at because anything over 200, they are told to recommend a statin drug and that's how that's how they're making money. And I'm not saying every doctor is corrupt and I'm not saying that every doctor is just trying to sell you drugs to make money, but I am telling you that <laughs> if you think that doctors are only making money from you coming in the door and paying your copay and having insurance pay them, it's not true. And this is a whole other topic for another day and I'm not here to poo poo on the medical industry, but I do wanna remind you that what we have is a sick care system, not a health care system. And so they're there to treat you if you're sick and if you're healthy, they don't have answers for you. They're looking for a problem, and if some of you saw my recent post on Instagram, don't look for a problem that doesn't exist. If your cholesterol level is high as a woman, your cholesterol level should be about 20 to 40 points higher than the average male because we've got more sex hormones to make. We need those cholesterol numbers so that we can make more of those hormones. As we age, we need more cholesterol to support our brain health. We need cholesterol, and not eating cholesterol and not eating saturated fat doesn't make your body not have cholesterol in it. It doesn't work that way. Your body is going to make it because it needs it. It's essential. Here are a couple of things that you can be eating that will raise your HDL cholesterol or the quote good cholesterol in a positive way. You can be eating saturated fat from sources like egg yolks and coconut oil. And so for those of you who have asked me, what's a way that I can increase my HDL? I'm looking at the numbers and you know, my doctor wants to see this number go up. Well, you can be eating more egg yolks and you can be eating more coconut oil and that may help support higher healthy HDL levels. Now, if your LDL levels are extremely high and I'm talking over 200 and there are some of you who've asked me questions and that those numbers were in there. You were saying, you know, over 300 or a thousand, some people have told me, this is a situation where you need to be checked for hypothyroidism because the way that thyroid hormone works in the body and LDL receptor sites, these two things compete in the body. And so I cannot tell you every scientific mechanism that's involved here. What I can tell you is you need to be checked for hypothyroidism and you might need to be treated for hypothyroidism. I can't tell you that. You need to get your levels checked. So if your body is not processing LDL properly, it may mean that your thyroid is not working and your thyroid controls your metabolism. What also controls your metabolism is your liver. And so one of the reasons why we have issues with people with high cholesterol and they're all stressed out about it is that this is the number that doctors are using to tell people something needs to change. The problem is what your doctor's not telling you is the truth about what's going to change that number in a way that's gonna change what's happening in your body. We don't wanna just change the number. Remember, we're not just trying to lower cholesterol. We're trying to lower inflammation so that cholesterol goes to a natural healthy place that it needs to be, period. And so there is some confusion with a lot of people around what those numbers should be. And like I said, this is something that I detail more in the masterclass. If it's something that you're interested in, you really wanna learn the whys behind it. And I do get into more of 
like what do each of the molecules do because I can basically draw it out for you in pictures, which is something I like to do. It's all done in video format as well as a journal and a workbook and all that. So the two things that people usually hear about are LDL being the bad cholesterol and HDL being the good one. And the reason for that is only that they have different purposes in the body. So while HDL can carry cholesterol to the liver in order for it to be processed and perhaps removed from the body, LDL is the particle that is responsible for delivering cholesterol to the sites of inflammation, to your arteries if it needs to. And so simply having high levels may not be the only information that you need. We need to know, is there also damage going on? And something that Chris Masterjohn talks a lot with, about a lot, which I can't fully explain for you because again, I am not a researcher, a scientist, I'm a nutritionist, so I'm giving you the information about what you can do to be empowered to help yourself. But Chris Masterjohn talks a lot about how it's not just about the amount of LDL that we've got going on, it's how much of it is oxidized or damaged. And you guys have heard me and you've heard Liz, my podcast co-host and teaching partner, talk a lot about oxidized damaged fats. And so we have something in the body that's oxidized and damaged with LDL if that's the case. And that's where we tend to have the problem. And here's the thing, you guys, I can't say it enough. It's that high inflammation in the body is the problem. It's not just the high cholesterol. The other factor here is triglycerides. And so for those of you who have the book, you can flip in here. I did include a little bit of information that I didn't include previously. It's on page 35 in the second edition of Practical Paleo, where I talk about how to figure out your triglyceride your HDL to triglyceride ratio, you divide triglycerides by HDL. And I'm giving you the guide in here that this is the basic guide of under 2.5 or even under two is good. And anything between about two and a half and three, you might wanna make some changes. And if that ratio is over three, then you've definitely got some problems going on. To me, triglycerides are a much better indication of does your diet match up with what your body can handle. And I think the cholesterol number itself, again, what you need to understand is that some of the numbers that we've been given, they're a bit low for what I would say are healthy cholesterol levels. Like I wouldn't really wanna see a female with cholesterol levels under about 180 or 175. I would rather see your cholesterol more in the 180 to 220 to 240 range. Again, I'm not a medical professional, but what I've seen in healthy females is that when we have levels there, we're able to produce our hormones properly. And if we have low cholesterol, sometimes we're having trouble with infertility, with PCOS, with issues of hormonal imbalance. And so we need that cholesterol to make our hormones. Remember that we need cholesterol to make hormones. One of the reasons why cholesterol can jump up is when you're extremely stressed because your body's trying to make more cortisol. And so a bad time to get your cholesterol checked if you're trying to do it for life insurance reasons would be during a really stressful time. That's not when you wanna get your cholesterol checked. You wanna do it when you're kinda of chilled out. You also don't wanna get your cholesterol checked if you're in the process of losing a lot of weight. I'm not talking you know, a pound or two. I'm talking you're really losing weight. You've made a lifestyle change, you've changed your diet, and your liver is processing and packaging that stuff to get it out. That's not the time to get it tested because the numbers are just gonna be all over the place. Fasting blood sugar is a good marker to check. What's your fasting blood glucose? You want to pay attention to your waist circumference. You want to pay attention to your body fat level, you guys. If you've got high levels of body fat, again, looking at your cholesterol as a reason to take a medication or as the sole reason to make a lifestyle change. Like if, if somebody's motivated to make a lifestyle change because their cholesterol numbers come back a certain way, fine. If that's what motivates you to make a lifestyle change, but if it's motivating you to take a prescription, you better check yourself because that prescription is not solving the problem and you cannot take a pill to absolve yourself of the responsibility of taking care of yourself. It's irresponsible as a human to think that a medical prescription is taking care of yourself when it's not. If you're in a doctor's office and your triglycerides are high and your blood sugar is high, and your cholesterol is high, your cholesterol is probably high because of all those other things. And here's the thing, you guys, the doctor is gonna say, well, I can give you a statin, but the problem is that doesn't fix the problem. That doesn't fix why your sugars are high. It doesn't fix why your triglycerides are high, and it doesn't fix why your cholesterol is high. This is just like, it blows my mind how quickly somebody will prescribe something instead of taking responsibility as a doctor and saying, you need to change your lifestyle. You need to stop eating crap. 
It's their responsibility, unfortunately, because you're in there with an issue or you've had your annual checkup. The problem is it's not their expertise. The problem is they're not taking responsibility to do it. Maybe some of them are, and if yours is, then great. Again, this is not this is not me poo-pooing on all doctors. This is what you guys are telling me that they're telling you. The only time that a prescription is you taking care of yourself is when you're being given something because your body doesn't make it naturally. So we're talking about thyroid hormone, we're talking about insulin, which is another hormone that your body may stop making, especially if you're type one or type 1.5 diabetic. If you have an autoimmune disease and someone's maybe giving you low dose naltrexone because your system is out of balance. If your system's out of balance and someone's giving you something to help it be in balance, then that's legit. If someone's giving you something to suppress or upregulate a normal body function, that is not okay. You guys need to find a new doctor who gets this stuff. And there are more of them. There definitely are more of them. A couple of things to remember, statin drugs have only ever proven to be beneficial in some cases of men who have had a heart attack before. So if you've not had a heart attack before, then chances are the statin drugs only doing more harm than good. And there are things that you can do to affect your lifestyle that are going to support your body. If you're taking a statin drug, you need to be taking coenzyme Q10. Bottom line, statins deplete coenzyme Q10 in the body. You need it for normal brain function. Again, if you're a male and you're experiencing issues of low testosterone, bad moods, and you're taking a statin drug, you need to check that. You know, I doubt most people who've been given this drug need this drug. It's a 30 plus billion dollar a year industry. Doctors are very quick to prescribe it. You know, doctors are people too. They don't get everything right. And sometimes it's just easier to go with the status quo. Again, it's not all doctors, but it is a lot of them. And I just am looking out for your health. I'm not, I don't make any money by telling you any of this. I don't care if you buy a book. I don't care if you don't ever give me a cent. Like not, I don't, I don't benefit from you buying, you know, grass fed beef and kale. Like there's nothing in it for me. And I promise you guys that if you follow recommendations that I'm giving you for free right now for three months, the stuff that I've told you, or if you come into the masterclass, go through the program with us, follow it for three months, for six months, get your blood work done, you will see improvements. I have no doubt about it. I mean, if your body is working normally and we get you healthier, you're gonna see improvements in that stuff. Now, if you have a thyroid issue and you have hypothyroidism, low thyroid function, and you need to get that addressed and that's something that you would need to talk about with your doctor, but okay, I'm like on a rant or something because this stuff gets me mad, you guys. My dad is on a statin and I would like to throat punch the person that gave him the statin drug. Maybe that sounds unprofessional of me, but I'm human and I get really angry about it. I'm really happy and lucky that my mom decided to listen to me and take my advice. Her doctor had recommended that she take a bunch of fish oil to lower her cholesterol and triglycerides. And I was like, how about we talk about what you're eating and go from there. So, sit me down. If somebody's motivated to make a lifestyle change because their cholesterol numbers come back a certain way, fine. If that's what motivates you to make a lifestyle change, but if it's motivating you to take a prescription, you better check yourself because that prescription is not solving the problem and you cannot take a pill to absolve yourself of the responsibility of taking care of yourself. It's irresponsible as a human to think that a medical prescription is taking care of yourself when it's not.